I'm going to look at some of the books I have collected on computer architecture and also we'll look at some of the books in VLSI design. Now we'll look at them together because I intend to take my design of a computer uh, CPU which I've got together and I'm going to uh, actually realise it in uh, VLSI using CMOS so the two of them kind of go together. So not in any order, again we'll just quickly get through the books that I've got sitting in my library just now. Stru structured Computer Organisation. So a lot of these books, the computer organisation books, and they're, they're relatively straightforward to read. You, you know, you don't, it's not like reading a, a, a really detailed maths book where you're scratching your head trying to work out, you know, from one line to the next and how the equations go from one line to the next and you can spend, you know, uh, several days in one page. You just read it and it's everything's there to understand. They're, they're nice books to read and it's a nice subject to learn because you can learn the subject um, relatively easily um, on your own as a self-learner. The uh, other one here, I've not used this one quite so much, uh, Digital Design and Computer Architecture. So that's a relatively new book that I've uh, I've purchased. Again, I've I've not gone through most of these books. I've gone through cover to cover. I've just used sections of them as and when I've required. Uh, this one here, again, this is an old one. PC assembly language. Uh, this I got back in nineteen ninety two, I think it was, and you can see that. I mean the. There's a couple of discs in it, and they're the five and a quarter inch floppy discs that you see over here. So that it's quite old. In fact, I was looking for the original uh, code for the discs because I don't have the original discs, and I would like to get the original disc because this is how I first learned about um, assembly language, uh, and I learned it on the eight o eight eight and eight o eight six processors. So I've done this book cover to cover and I've worked through it and I remember when I did it way back in 1992 that I really enjoyed it and I got a lot out of it. Um, Logic Circuits. This was a book that was recommended when I was in second year at university back 1993, 94, something like that. And again, just a simple little logic book. Uh, you can get all of the information that's in this freely available online. You know, there's lots of uh, free courses you can do, but a uh, nice little book. Uh, well, this one, but how do it know? Uh, if you're interested in working out exactly what a uh, CPU is and what it does, then I would recommend this book. Um, I have got a course on Udemy, which is based on the, uh, loosely based on the, uh, the actual design that's in this. Uh, so I've taken the designs in this and I've, I've generated it in a tool called Logisim and I've had to add certain sections in and take certain sections out in order to get it all working together within that tool but that's definitely one I would recommend if you're an absolute beginner. Computer hardware. I like this one. Computer hardware principles. Uh, and I've enjoyed this book and I've enjoyed working through certain sections of the book. I think it's maybe a bit bright there, I don't know if you can see it. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's nice, uh, it's nicely presented. A lot of good imagery in it. Um, so, again, I, I take sections out of this book uh, when I require it. This book here. is again an old book that I got back in the early 1990s and it goes over the 8088 microprocessor. It's a nice little book um, and it's a hardback as well. Um, I worked through this pretty much cover to cover uh, and I've got quite a lot of information and comprehension from it. This is a new one which I've picked up and it's the Elements of a computing computing system. So again, you build up your own uh, CP. In fact, you build up your own uh, computer in effect uh, using this. But I haven't worked through it yet. I've went only through certain sections. But again, it's a project that 
I could sit and probably do over the space of uh, three, two or three, maybe four weeks. And it would be well worthwhile making through that. I know I would get a lot from it. But again, right now it's about time. So I will get through that at some point. Inside the Machine. This is a new one as well. But I've read through this cover to cover. And it's a nice uh, description of a modern CPU. So obviously it doesn't get into massive detail on the actual architecture. But it goes into detail on the... Uh, how they're set up uh, and the differences between uh, lots of the modern CPUs. Uh, that's a, a, a real interesting book and it's a, a well worthwhile read and it's a relatively straightforward read as well. So I haven't really enjoyed that. That's been really good. Principles of Computer Organisation. Again, I got that from a whenever I was at the uh, university. So that was a recommended text. And you see it covers the uh, the 68000 processor. Uh, again, if you can find that and you're interested in some basics on computer organisation, then I would suggest that book. It's really quite, quite good. Now, this is an old book, this one, from the 1970s. Uh, I'll try and get it on so you don't get that light there. Computer Architecture. Okay, so it is an old book, uh, but it's been quite an enjoyable book to read. Uh, again, I've not gone through all of it. I've just taken the sections out which I'm interested in or, or of use or value to me. Um, so I'll put that up so you can see it. Okay. Computer Architecture and Organisation. I've not gone through all of that book. I've gone through maybe half of it. Uh, and uh, I got bogged down and I got started on something else. Uh, so it's still sitting there and I still tend to get through it. Uh, it's a book of a similar type to... Yep. Similar type to this one here. Okay. Um, so I've just not gone through... Uh, this completely yet. And another one, it's an old one, Computer System Architecture. Again, this was a, a recommended text at the time, uh, I think when I was at university. Uh, although I don't remember having used it very much, um, but uh, this is one I've always had sitting on my shelf. And again, I, I, I tend to when I'm looking for some information, obviously I get an awful lot, lot online, but I do tend to, a lot of time, the first port of call, I flick through each of these books and I just see a comparison between each of them, each of them and how they describe uh, the, the things I'm interested in. So that's pretty much um, the, well, well, actually there's one more. You can see it sitting down on the, on the couch here. Okay, so I'll just go and grab that. Um, Actually, it's quite an important one. So this is a handbook of floating point arithmetic. So if you want to understand floating point numbers and how a floating point unit is built, then uh, absolutely this is the go-to book. Uh, it's actually um, about it's about hundred and twenty odd pound for the book. Uh, I got this one for um, sixty five pounds uh, online. So um, if you hunt long long enough I think you'll probably find a free PDF of it but I wanted it in hardback because I'm oh sorry I wanted it actually printed because I do have a course I've got two courses on designing floating point unit and uh, I'm taking a lot of the detail from this book here because it's actually quite hard to get all of the detail on uh, floating point units uh, and it, it seems to be a bit of a an acquired taste uh, I've got courses there as I said and I've taken a lot of time putting those courses together and they're just not as popular as I thought they would be and uh, not because the uh, quality of the work isn't good I just think that people uh, in general are just not that that interested in it <laughs> uh, and it's hard to get into it at first but once you get into it it becomes quite addictive uh, so those are all of the books I have really on computer architecture and design and again it's just a bit of a hobby of mine 
so I've had over the years. Now, I'll go through these books as well. I wasn't going to at first, but then I thought that they're, they're, they're related, you know, really related. Um, so the latest one I got, which I really do enjoy, is this uh, CMOS Integrated Circuits. It's really meant as a, a graduate level um, text. And uh, I've I've liked the examples that are in it, and I like the uh, just the the general setup of the book and the 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 um, what's actually in the content of the book. So I'm not going to go through all the details. Obviously, I don't have any time here, uh, but I've really quite enjoyed that. And I have a CMOS integrated circuit design course out there as well. I did spend seven years as an analog integrated circuit designer. Um, way back in the um, the mid to about seven years after 1995 to 2003, so roughly. Um, another one there is CMOS VLSI Design. So these are my two kind of go-to books for, uh, for really for the digital design. And I'm using these in order to say, generate that course. But what I'm doing is I've got a working design for a CPU and it's only an 8-bit CPU but I will be extending on it and once I've extended to the 16-bit and added in a few extras stuff into it, I mean possibly the, a bit of a floating point unit. I, might, I don't know if I'll get all of the floating point unit in but I'll add some of it in and I will then uh, actually realise it in, uh, in CMOS in produce the layout for it as well, as if you're actually building a, a, a chip up from scratch, from uh, individual transistors up to the full layout in, uh, in silicon. So that's the idea. Um, now, this book here is my first book that I got back in 1995 after I graduated and I went to work for uh, Plessy, Plessy, yeah, Plessy Semiconductor down in Swindon and this is, I really did um, uh, full uh, bipolar uh, and it was, um, it wasn't digital, it was analogue design, so full bipolar analogue design and I've actually done this book cover to cover and it's all annotated and I've used every single bit of it, um, so I did use that for my, my work and, uh, but uh, doing full, uh, doing purely bipolar uh, design now. It's probably a bit of a, a niche market. Only got a few left, three or four here. So, uh, Moss Circuit Design, uh, written by uh, the lecturer at Edinburgh University, so for one of our courses. So, um, this has been a good little book as well. I've got a lot of good information out of that. Uh, VLSI Design. Uh, just an extra one I've picked up throughout the years and I've just, I've used a few bits of it in the, uh, the digital section here, not really stuff on the analogue. And I don't really do any analogue design at all, I haven't done it for several years, I'm just not that madly interested in it now. Uh, I prefer just uh, kind of more mathematics. Uh, this is another book I've uh, used whenever I was working for I got that when I was working for Cadence Design Systems and I used to work through that and I got a lot of uh, good details and good examples. But again, it's an industry that I, I got out of, I mean, early 2000 and 2003, I think I stopped doing it and I never did it again after that. I moved on to other things. Uh, it wasn't a subject that, that, that deeply interested me, uh, but it was still, and still fascinated at the time, I suppose. Uh, but that's all of the books that I have at the moment, and I'll probably go over uh, my signal processing stuff uh, next. And as you can see, I've got quite a lot of stuff, but I have accumulated it over 30, 30 years, you know, so I would expect to have quite a lot. Uh, so that's all there is for this video. If you're interested in any of the particular books that I've shown you here, you can get in contact and I can go through uh, one or two of them in more detail if you want. So that's all for this video. Thanks for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.